All right, I hope you had a good weekend. And in this week's forecast, we're going to take a look first at the Euro USD. So I posted about this one a couple of times last week. And essentially what I'm looking for this week is I want to see how the pair reacts to this 11060 area up here. Okay, so you can see how this acted as support back here during the second half of August. We then had this retest last week, but as I noted, I don't want to sell this right now because this retest right here was very aggressive. So this buying pressure right here was just as intense as the selling pressure in August. So this is not something I want to sell, at least not at the moment. And furthermore, as I pointed out last week, you can see that currently the pair is actually sitting right at the bottom of this longer term channel. So right now, as things stand, I do think that the Euro USD has more room to move higher than it does lower. Okay. So if you sell right now, essentially you're looking at a move from here to possibly here. Whereas if buyers end up breaking this area up here, the pair could actually trend higher toward this region. So if I just do a quick analysis from back here, we can see that the pair moved up down came back here, formed, started to form this resistance area, moved lower, came back up into this region. It's now sold off. So logically, just looking at this pattern right here, we can assume that the pair is going to want to move back up into this resistance area. So this is something I'm keeping an eye on this week. Um, again, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to sell it right now, but I do want to see how the market responds to 11060. So this level right here, this horizontal level, as well as this 111 region right here, which is descending channel resistance. If we start to see the pair pressure of this area, it's likely that we'll see a break of it and a move higher. Uh, but again, do be careful with the Euro USD because we've seen a lot of this choppy price action. Um, it's been really difficult to get any, any type of trend out of it. So if we do come up here, perhaps we move lower this week, come up and break this, but I do think then we'll see a pullback into this region. And if it holds, we could see another 50 to 100 pip move higher. Before we move on, be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube so you can get notifications when I post these videos um, every Sunday, as well as helpful Forex tips throughout the week. And if you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit that thumbs up button so that I can help as many people as possible. All right, so next up is the British pound. And I wrote about this one uh, on Wednesday of last week. So we were looking for a breakout of this channel resistance right here. And we got that on Wednesday, followed by a retest on Thursday as new support. And I actually mentioned this region right here. So I gave a 20 pip zone on Wednesday, I said that this area right here needs to serve as support and you can see where it did. Now, I also wrote about this on Friday and you can see how Friday's candle closed up above these highs back here. So right now, this area is serving as support. However, that does not mean it's going to continue to do so. We could very well see the pair come back down here into this 122 region. But as long as this holds as support, so this area right here, as long as that holds that support, then I think we, I, I at least have to respect the potential for a move higher. And that resistance area is going to be up here around 123.80. Now, on the other hand, if we see the pound close the day back below this area, all right, so if we see the pair come back down here, closes down below this area, that would be a sign of weakness and we could then see it sell off toward just above this 120 region. You can see how it served as support back here. And again, here when we had this bullish pin bar. So in summary, I think if you can catch, if you can catch a move down into this 122 region and we see some type of bullish price action form here, I think that could be a favorable trade up to this 123 area. And if buyers can break that, then we could see the pair 
come up, break it, retest. If it holds, then I do think we could see a move up to the 125.80 region. But again, this area needs to hold. If it does not, it's a sign of weakness and I may entertain a sell. Okay, next up we have the dollar yen. So let me move over here. And similar to the pound and even the euro, we have a lot of descending channels occurring right now. So you can see where the dollar yen carved this channel here. And we had actually been watching for a break of this 106.80 level um, for quite some time. And as you can see, the pair got stuck between this 105 area and 106.80 for uh, several weeks, actually all of August. But you can also see where the pair came down, retested 105, came back up, consolidated just below 106.80, retested this area, formed somewhat of a double bottom down here, and has now broken above 106.80. So I do think that as long as 106.80 holds as new support, I think the dollar yen has more upside in store for the week ahead. But again, it all comes down to whether or not buyers can maintain prices above this 106.80 level, <clears throat> excuse me, 106.80 on a daily closing basis. So we saw this break here on Thursday. The pair did sell off on Friday, but notice how it closed above 106.80. So it closed above this level. All right, so as long as we maintain prices above 106.80, that 108 region is exposed. And on the flip side, if we do close below 106.80, then that would be a sign of weakness and we could see the pair at least pull back into these lows, perhaps even all the way back to 105. Okay, but for now, I am staying relatively bullish the dollar yen for a move up into that 108 region. All right, so next up we have the Australian dollar. And it's no surprise that we have yet another descending channel. However, in this case, we actually have these two ascending channels that formed back in here. And I actually mentioned the pair when it broke down on this day. We traded this uh, from here all the way down here to this 67.50 level. So we got out right here. It was a great trade. But for the past few weeks, the Australian dollar is sort of just consolidated, chopped along sideways along this channel bottom. So I haven't really traded it. I haven't been interested in it until last week. You can see that the pair went on this four day rally here and it not only put in, I believe it was 170 pips, but the pair also closed above this 6820 level. So you can notice how back here it served as resistance. And for the coming week, I do expect buyers to come in here and try to prop up prices above 68.20. And you'll also notice that 68.30 is a key level as well. That was actually Thursday's high, as well as this swing low back here. So I think that 68.20 to 68.30 region could attract buyers this week. And for the week ahead, 69.00, 69.10, this region up here should provide resistance. So notice that we have this low back here as well as a high and low back here, and again throughout this region. And last but not least, we have the British pound against the yen. All right, so in this case, we do have a trend line, but as I mentioned in the post, um, it's not the most significant trend line because really we just had these two points here. And it did break from this trend line because if I actually zoom into a four hour chart, you can see how this is the same trend line right here. You can see how the pair broke above it on this candle and then it supported it right here. And especially on this candle right here, we actually got somewhat of a bullish pin bar right here. So I think from at this point, what I'm looking for is I wanna see that 129.70 region. So this kind of confluence of support down here, I wanna see this hold. So if the pair does come back into this area this week, I wanna see this hold, and I wanna see some type of bullish price action here, which could indicate a return to 132.20. And if we end up breaking that, then I do think the pair stands a good chance of coming up here and retesting this 135.40 area. So notice back here, it served as support. 
support again through here. The pair broke below it and then it became resistance right here. So that's kind of the game plan for this week. So I do wanna see this region hold up. I also think these highs from back here could provide some support. So really this region right here between 130.30 and 129.70 should serve as support. And that 132.20 area will serve as resistance for the week ahead. All right, so that's all for this week. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to subscribe on YouTube and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and have a great week of trading.